Good morning and a very warm welcome to this Closing the Gap conference. My name is Michael Bichard. Uh, I'm delighted to be here, but then at my age, I'm delighted to be anywhere. Uh, more important, I hope you're delighted to be here and we're very pleased to have you. Um, BAFTA, of course, is a venue more usually associated with the glitz and glamour of the film industry. And in fact, when I was standing in the loo just now, I was just thinking about the people who must have stood in that loo. Um, today is different. I mean, some people think that you know, this is a somewhat unglamorous debate. Well, it may be, but this debate about closing the gap is absolutely essential. I think one of the most important debates in education and in government uh, today. Um, and the reasons for the gap in attainment between uh, high achievers, low achievers, rich and poor, uh, it's really crucial that we do do something about bridging it. I want to say thank you to BAFTA for having enabled us to be here today. We at Film Club, of course, are also absolutely delighted to be able to share the platform today and share the organisation of this conference with the Times Education Supplement and Save the Children UK. And we've all joined forces, again, because we think this is such an important issue and also because we think from some of the work we've been doing, all of us, that we maybe have some, something to offer in terms of what works uh, and what doesn't work and some contribution to make to this debate. But we're acutely conscious that the people who really know, you know what needs to be done are really experiencing the issues out there and mostly the people in the audience today. And we want to give you a fair amount of time uh, to let us have your views. I'd be very surprised uh, if we didn't today um, become involved in some quite difficult discussions because this is an issue which touches on some sensitive issues for the British. Class, geography, parenting, quality of school experience, early financial circumstances, digital access at home and at school, confidence, aspiration, school attendance and critically the quality of teaching. It's a long list but all of those things really, really matter and I'd be surprised if we didn't spend some time talking about them. Inevitably also, I think we'll be asking ourselves some difficult questions. For example, does it really matter that the poor but bright child growing up in Britain today is no better place to climb the social ladder than their equivalents back in 1970? That's research done by the Sutton Trust. Does it matter that bright children from poor homes are on course to be overtaken by their less able but affluent peers by the time they've reached seven? And how concerned should we be that 1.7 million children are living in severe poverty? That's more than one in 10 of the children living in the UK. Or that one in three children have no access to a computer or that by the age of three, the average child from a middle class home has a vocabulary of 1,100 words, while the average child from a working class home is just 535. So difficult issues, difficult questions. But the hard fact is that despite actually pretty significant investment over the last 13 years and despite real efforts by everyone here and in schools around the country, over the last two or three decades, we've not really managed to close the gap. And in some cases, it seems to have got wider. Now, as we move forward, we face years of severely squeezed spending on all of our public services schools included, and is that going to make the problem worse? Nick Clegg, the Deputy Prime Minister, says the pupil premium will help mitigate the cuts and could really help to boost the performance of disadvantaged pupils. But at the end of the day, it all depends on how schools spend the money. And if most of the efforts made during the years of relative plenty haven't made that much of an impact, I doubt if aiming more or the same at the poorest children will make that much difference. It's time, I think, to be a bit more imaginative about how we spend the money. What do I mean by that? Well, it's always seemed to me that we do at the moment provide education to young people through academic subjects in particular. We do it in a school setting. We do it to quite a rigid curriculum. And in too many schools, too many children have been switched off. For them, education has become a joyless and for some alienating chore. And they do opt out either physically by playing truant or mentally by just zoning out. And I believe we need to offer them opportunities that engage and excite them to bring them back in. 
For my part, my time during and especially since I stopped running the Education and Employment Department has convinced me that one of the best ways to do this is through the creative arts. As Vice-Chancellor of the University of the Arts in London, then as co-founder of a company called Artis, and now as chairman of the Film Club, a national charity that provides children with the opportunity to watch great films in schools. I've seen it firsthand just how the arts can switch young people on to education in a way that for some, nothing else can. And we've got 160,000 children now every week watching films in Film Club. We're actually probably one of the biggest youth engagement charities in the country. And that's why we think and I think that arts should be a central activity in schools, not considered as it so often is as a bit of froth or an add-on that can be cut when it gets tough without anybody noticing, but actually a core part of the curriculum for rich or poor, for gifted or struggling. I think the arts do make school a more inviting and inspiring and more ed truly educational place. And we shouldn't forget either that for many people, for many young people, the creative arts and creative skills actually give them a pathway into jobs. Uh, the uh, creative uh, industries, for example, now make up the biggest sector in the London economy. The fact is that a lot of kids from poorer families don't get access to the arts uh, outside of school. And if we don't provide that in school, then I think they miss a real chance of bridging this achievement gap. So obviously we hope the ministers and schools and others are going to listen to that message. Let's put the arts back where they belong, at the heart of education.